Hey all, Andy here, helping you build a career you love on this overly dreary Thursday, 11 a.m. Central in the U.S., but I know the sun is out there for you. As long as I'm here for you, the sun is always shining on your career. Get in, say hi. We're going to be on for 60 minutes. Got a lot to share with you today about a lot of stuff coming up in the Mile Walk Academy. We're going to take your questions. We'll pro I'll probably just grab them from the chat unless Kara wants to help me organize these things. I always like to say hello. I think I saw somebody named Heather in the chat early. Adam Stark, Tori, great to see you. Donna, Mark, Mari, Petula, Jennifer, and everybody else from around the world. Let me know where you're watching from. If you got any questions, put some question marks in front of your questions so Kara and I can find them easily. And uh, let's uh, let's get this get this kicked off. I see a question. Let's just get right into it. Tori, what's happening? Interviewed with a high elected official yesterday and was told that we work hard here. And I started at 5 a.m. before. And if you work on weekends, you can work at home one day a week. Not getting a good vibe, but isn't it better to take a job when you have none and keep looking, though? Okay. So couple 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 things on this. I I don't I don't mind when when someone says, you know, hey, we we work hard here. Uh you know, I don't mind organizations that are dedicated to building a great product, providing a great service, growing their business, and all of that is 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 great. Uh but when you Okay, now now I start working at 5 a.m. You don't have to start working at 5 a.m. And if I'm gonna and but I'm in business for myself and I run my own company and that's how I'm dedicated to my organization or building the Mile Walk uh, and Mile Walk Academy. But to be asking you to start at five and work the weekends and all that other good stuff, you know, when duty calls, I don't think that's a big deal if it's occasional. But if this is constant 80 hour weeks, I think that's probably a red flag. Now. Uh, the part about, you know, not getting a good vibe, I probably wouldn't either if somebody openly shared that. Uh, but when you ask about, isn't it better to take a job when you have none, that's a personal preference. So I'm about, what is it that you want to happen? And then what are the steps to make that happen? If you are obviously in a job search, you are looking for a job. And if you are feeling uncomfortable by not having a job because you need to put food on the table, then I totally support you taking a job if the money is a means to an end to support yourself. It's, I, I know that may sound um, silly or like duh, but I, I, I also think that, that you should be in a job that you love and that there's more to life than money. But if you need to take care of you, then I totally support that. Only you could determine uh, how much in financial dire straits you are. Because if you could wait it out, then I probably would keep searching for an for a, a organization that I really clicked with and that was really a fit for me. If this is not something that you want to be, you know, doing the kind of schedule you want to be holding, then I would say keep looking. The alternative is you can accept the job and continue to look. And in the event that you do start getting more interviews and they ask you, well, hey, you just started a job. What's that about? You just say, I, I, I needed the, I needed the money and I can, I'm continuing to look. I did what I had to do. And if they say, well, what makes us think that you won't do that to us? say, I've already got the job that pays me. I'm looking for a job, a home that I, you know, an organization that I can get behind and want to support. And so I'm not just, I'm, an, I'm, I'm obviously in a position now where I can be more selective. And so that's the way I would approach that. So it isn't, it isn't a, is it better to take a job if I don't have one? I'm all about being patient and finding the right job. But if you get to the point where you need money, I completely support and respect the fact that you might need to take that. So I hope that, I hope that helps. And Kara is letting me know. I think there might have been a question before that. Mark M., I work for a small company that doesn't belong to the work number or other reference sites. Uh, I'm not even sure what the work number site is. Maybe that's something I should know. I, I have not heard of it. Will not belonging to those sites raise a red flag when interviewing? I don't even know what that site is, so I'm going to say no. Uh, is calling my current employer for reference enough? Wait, that doesn't belong to the work number. I'm not. I'm not sure what that is. I don't know if that's a site where organizations can reach in and try to contact somebody from another site who will give you a reference. But 
is calling my current employer for references enough, usually. Sometimes they don't even bother. Most organizations don't, it, it's, it's about 50-50 in terms of who actually checks references. I'm talking about calling somebody up and speaking to somebody and saying, is Mark M a good dude? Okay, that, that's, a, that's an actual reference check from some, an individual you provided and they said, we want to do, you know, give me your references, we want to call them, as opposed to a background check, did you actually work at that company or the company before and so on. Those are different types of checks. So I, I'm not entirely sure what that site is or, or what it's used for, but I, I do not think that any of that's an issue. All right, and then... Here's another one. In the boot camp, I heard Andy mentioning an interview with someone about LinkedIn X-Ray but couldn't find the video. There is a uh, there is a video inside the job search coaching program. We formerly called it uh, the job search boot camp, but Mark's referring to a product in the Milwaukee Academy library for premium members. And there is a module called Job Searching. It's the third module in the main product. And inside the module three, there are a number of videos related to bringing yourself to market and figuring out who to target, how to target, and so on. One of those videos we've, is, is called LinkedIn X-Ray, uh, where we show you how to use Google Boolean to actually not search uh, inside of LinkedIn, but search outside of LinkedIn, the LinkedIn database to come up with individuals who meet certain criteria. And we show you how to actually structure your queries using Google Boolean to search the LinkedIn database so that LinkedIn doesn't know that you're actually searching the LinkedIn database because you're using Google, not LinkedIn. Because anybody who's used LinkedIn a lot to search inside of LinkedIn gets thrown in LinkedIn jail. And if you don't know what that is, you might want to figure out and Google that because you don't want to be thrown in LinkedIn jail because it significantly handicaps your ability to find the people because it restricts your searching. So uh, that's my long, long answer to markets in module three. There is a video, if you just scroll right on down, that says, you know, LinkedIn x-ray, how to find blah, blah, blah. And uh, I talk about it. We actually have one of the boot campers demo it. Kara is very, very good with Google, Google Boolean as well if you have any questions. <laughs> okay, Ashley, uh, work number equal background checks to verify employment. There you go. Ashley, thank you for that. And, uh, and, and Mark M, I would not worry in the least. You got a phone number for the company. If the company exists, great. If the company doesn't exist and they want to talk to somebody from that organization as one of your references, you give them somebody. Mari Travos, is it advisable to follow up on inquiries if we don't receive an initial response from the company or organization? I am going to take the time to actually do this because I haven't shown you guys this in a while. And most people know what I'm about to pull out. And this is the world according to Andy. Now, let me qualify what I'm about to say for any of those salespeople who are going to take offense to this. The greatest salespeople in the world... The greatest salespeople in the world are ones who can show their prospects or their potential customers or customers latent pain. Like you have a problem and you don't even know it. And I'm here with my big cape on and a big S on my chest to save the day for you. And I'm going to educate you and help you understand why this is the case. Then you're going to buy something from me. That's the greatest salesperson in the world. The most effective salesperson, the one who is going to make the most money for his or her company, is the one who understands that the world is big, it's abundant, and there are lots of opportunities out there. And just because somebody says no, I would rather spend my time searching for somebody who is already inclined to buy my services, work with me, needs my help, and so on, and takes less convincing because the world is abundant and there are many people out there. So in your terms, you all who are job searching are in the greatest marketing and sales effort of your life, period, hard stop. Ain't nothing harder than this. So with bringing yourself to market, you are your time is better spent doing what I call feeding the funnel, which is reaching out to people, 
the initial reach out. I would rather you reach out to 100 people a week than chase 10 who you really, really, really want because you think it's your dream company or you think it's a great company to work for, and those people aren't getting back to you. So uh, in 2018, I drew this card, and I actually, I actually, I want to see if I could do this. I don't know if you could see this, but this is, this is, the, this is the marketing machine on you know, one of the Mile Walk Academy mugs if you want a constant reminder of what this thing looks like. And I say to you that this is a breakdown of what your time allocation in terms of your job search should be. Everything in life is a funnel. Everything in life is a funnel. You start out with a lot, you whittle it down, and out pops one or multiple widgets. That's it. So up at the top, I would rather you spend 90% of your time finding companies, targeting people, sending your resumes directly to them. This does not this does not, this funnel does not include putting your resume into the applicant trashing system that counts as zero. But I would rather you spend nine of your 10 job searching hours, whether that's 10 in a day or 10 across the week or 10 across the month. I would rather you spend nine of them finding people to send your communications to. If some, and what, but what a lot of you do is you spend a, a lot of time, not just time, but emotional energy in the next part of the funnel, which is whittling down the amount of time that you should be spending in exchanging. Meaning, hey, uh, hey, hey, Mari, I'm getting back to you. I'm Andy. Thank you for reaching out to me. Let's talk. And then you respond back and say, hey, Andy, that's great. That's an exchange. But then if I don't get right back to you, you're, you're, you're now wondering how much time and emotional energy should I spend trying to go back and forth with these people or companies you're already interviewing with. You should spend so little time doing that because it's an ineffective, ineffective use of your time. It should be, okay, Andy, what time's the Zoom session? Where are we going to meet for coffee? Where are we going to do the interview? Who am I talking to? That's all you want to do. Bang, that should take you seconds and you should be spending a lot of time up here. And then what'll happen is you'll have some interviews and I would say that's like a little less than 10%. So one hour spent prepping for an interview, negotiating a deal or whatever, and then out will pop your job or maybe multiple job offers. 90%. I would spend nine out of 10 hours. So to get back to your question, if I really wanted to talk to that person, I would send them one message. I would probably give them a week or 10 days. They would get a friendly tap on the shoulder with as few words as possible, like under 10 Still want to talk to you because don't send them a lot more because they didn't respond the first time. They don't want to read a long follow-up about you want, trying to convince them of what, why they need to talk to you. Tap them on the shoulder and that's it and forget about them. I would hit send and sort later. I would hit send and forget. Pop it in your spreadsheet, pop it in your tool, whatever. pop it in your booklet, whatever you're using to track your stuff and that's it and that's all I would do. And it's the same thing when I'm talking to you about one of my programs. Here's the program. If you want in, great. If you got questions, I'm happy to answer those because those are buying signals because you want clarification because you want to make a good decision. That is an exchange worth happening. But you get, you get one response from me, two tops. That's it. If, if we can't get it resolved in that, I'm going to just say, look, go ahead and look at the rest and make a decision because I'm not going to spend a lot of time clarifying that because in my, in my estimation, my time is better spent trying to share me with other people. So that's what I think that, that, that how I think you should approach it. This is decades of experience talking. This is not, I mean, I might've whipped this card up pretty quickly, but the amount of time it took me to break all this down and figure all this out was extensive. Take my word for it. Okay, so I hope I hope that helps. How persistent should we be? I'm not persistent at all. You get one email, you get one follow up. That's it. I laugh every day. I get no less than a dozen emails that are the fifth or sixth try of people saying bumping this up to the top of your box, to which case I either hit delete or finally I say, please stop. So that's my view on that. I, I see you've got a bunch of other questions, but I think I've hit them all. Ye, is it Yalen Serrano? Love that name. Hope I pronounced it correctly. If not, you let me know. How long does the boot camp take to complete, and what's the time commitment to complete the program? So let me let me articulate it this way. There is a 
<clears throat> an abundance of information inside the library. And the Job Search Coaching Program is an all-encompassing everything you could possibly need to find your dream job, well position yourself, and negotiate effectively to get paid what you deserve, or at least maybe even more than you deserve. And the way it's broken down is there is a, a singular program that's somewhat streamlined. And by streamlined, I don't mean short, but it basically is kind of the stripped down version of all the major pillars of a job search. And so there's a there's a boot camp style program that actually we're going to also be doing live in January. There's a stripped down version of this. And not everybody is going to watch every video in this even in the stripped down version cuz you might not need to to do that. There are five pillars. There's getting yourself in order, positioning yourself, understanding you, your why, your internal markers, all your requirements and then how to investigate the market. And that should suffice for 90% of the people, except that some people don't know what direction they want to go. So there's some additional videos inside that help you get on track and ensure that you're taking steps that are making progress, even if you don't know where the flag is, but I get you moving in the right direction. There are supplemental videos that you don't have to watch if you don't want to. And, and a lot of people might not need to, but some people will. So I put that in there because the, pro the product evolves over time because the more I learn from you, the more I want to structure it and get you everything you need. Then it goes into marketing you. That's, that's resume writing, cover letters, LinkedIn profile and such. That's the second major pillar, except there's a whole resume writing workshop that gives you everything soup to nuts. If you want to go through that, that's several more hours of all the detail with all your questions answered, lots of resume, feedback examples, role-playing, live, how to use AI, other things related to that. You may or may not want to do that. You might just say, hey, my resume looks pretty good. Let's get trying. That's the third step, which is bringing yourself to market. There's umpteen ways to do that. I give you the streamlined way to do that, and then I give you an entire job search challenge, which is another product. If you want deeper levels of, of explanation, deeper tools, and other things like that. And then there's an interviewing module, streamlined. Again, you could take each one of these streamlined things that I'm saying in 90 minutes if you wanted to. Or you could go over to the interview intervention training program, which is the blowout of the fourth step, and watch that for 25 hours. If you wanted to look at all the details and know everything about interviewing and every imaginable thing you'd need to say, how to break everything down, again, role-playing videos, talking about how to tell stories with people inside the program, you could see this stuff if you wanted to. And then there's a negotiation uh, module, 90 minutes, except in November, I'm creating a three-day salary negotiation entire program that these people are going to get. So... The, that's the way the, the program is structured. If you wanted to, you could watch the main pillars in one day if you wanted to. I recommend you do that. I recommend you, may, or maybe you watch one each day for a week, and then you go back and you actually work the work the process. And then as you get into it, as you, as you get into interviewing, go and take in some of the deeper interviewing videos that will help you better understand the more advanced tactics. So this is my very long-winded way of saying Everybody's going to go about this differently. Some people want to get in. They say, hey, Andy, I know who I am. I just need to get my requirements in order. Give me that dang spreadsheet that looks so beautiful. I'll fill that in. Bang, I'm going to go through, bop, resume, send it out. Let's see what happens. Hey, I'm starting to get interviews. Great. All right, great. Right kind of thing. Some people do that. Some people are in the middle of interviewing and they jump in the program. And so others are, hang on, I, I want to follow all the instructions. I want to understand what the blueprint of a great job search looks like. These are skills you're going to use your whole life and even beyond job searching. And so, you know, how long it takes, you could, you could watch it all in a, in a, in a, before 2 o'clock on a day if you started at 8 o'clock and you took a lunch break. Or you could go deeper and take in all the extra instruction. Then how quickly you're going to get results is going to be uh, predicated on how consistent you are in working the job search challenge principles of, of getting your, your resume in front of the right people or getting messages in front of the right people on a consistent basis. Some people, I mean, we have one woman that you're going to hear from. Uh, she struggled for 10 months, got in the program, watched it, like just took a week, watched it, and then started her process on a Monday 
by Wednesday she had she had the employer, she had a job kind of thing. Meaning she had she had hooked the employer that she then spent a few weeks interviewing with and took a job. So, I mean, it's 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 a really, really well structured system. And then we supplement it with online support and live group coaching sessions, which I'm actually going to show you some of the coaching sessions that we have coming up and what some of the topics are. But I, I always appreciate these kind of questions because I love to talk about the program. In fact, we have a special going on right now that we didn't even publicize. It's like a one day special. And um, because we're meeting tomorrow as a as a private group, and I always like to try to give you a price break around the times we do that. I hope that helps. I'll actually talk for maybe two minutes about just what the up, some upcoming upcoming dates are around the Mile Walk Academy here in about 10 minutes. Adam Stark, you said to focus on one job type and niche down. Is my situation an exception as won't be my main career? If not, how to shortlist current options are all roles I can do and will enjoy somewhat. I didn't say focus on one job type and niche down. What I said is, let's be really clear what I said. Your greatest and most effective way to most quickly get a job interview is to niche down and hit the center of the dartboard with what an employer is looking for and you showing them that you match that. The more niche you are, the better you are. And if you're wondering what the hey is, did Andy just say, if I said to you, I know I use this joke a lot, I have a global community. They're in 200 countries all around the world, literally. The United States makes up 40% of the people that are in my programs. Actually, it might even be 30-something. Um, last time we checked, which was a couple of weeks ago, it was like borderline 40, which means that 60% are all over the place. There's men, there's women. I coached somebody yesterday who is 22 years old. I coached somebody yesterday who is 64 years old. Okay, right? So you see the, the wide demographics. I mean, no, that's a no joke. That's literally what happened yesterday. But if I said to you, Adam, I only coach men in the UK who are in the event planning business in your town, you would be feeling pretty damn good about hiring me as your coach, would you not? Because I would know everything there is to know about that location, that, that function, that industry, those company types, I'd know them all, right? That's more niche. And that would be making you feel pretty good about hiring me, right? Kind of thing. So, um, so now, to look at multiple opportunities is okay. What... What I want, what I want to do, the, the 22 year old, uh, she's a researcher. Okay, she lives in California. Maybe she's here, and she is a researcher and has done work for a consulting company, and she has researching expertise for a consultancy. Understands consulting, understands research, understands the pharma industry because a lot of the research that she did was for the main pharmaceutical companies like some of the blue chip Fortune 500 companies were her company's clients in which case she worked on those projects. Okay. To niche down, she could look at just pharma companies. She could look at just researching companies. She could look at consulting companies. She could look at clinical trial companies. Each one of those is what we, what like a, a clinical research organization, we call them CROs, but each, each one of those four or five that I just mentioned are what I call company segments or industry segments. And what you're doing is you can, she can search within the segments but what she's aligning, what we, what she and I worked on the other day was that we aligned her messaging. What does she say to that segment? What does she say to that segment, that segment, and that segment? So what we did was we gave her actually five segments, but we niched her messaging so that she had the right messaging. So when she sent her messages to those people in that segment, they were targeted niche, and she looked like a perfect fit because she basically spotlit the things she wanted them to see, which is exactly what they would want in a person. So for you, what you're doing is you need to do that for each segment. So for event planning, you would do that, but not just event planning. Are you event planning and targeting event planning companies? That's one thing. If you're targeting a corporation who needs an event planner, your messaging is different. Does this, does this make sense? Do you all see when you market, you tailor your message to the recipient based on what the recipient needs to understand? Okay, it's not even like spinning. It's, it's literally, 
I want to articulate this to you in a manner that would resonate with you so you're getting the information you need to know about me. And so that's, that's, what's, that, that's, what's, that's what you need to do. That's what I said. So, so that's how I would go about it. And then what I told her, and I'm going to tell you, is the reason you want to do that, four segments, five segments, is because when you job search, you don't search one segment at a time right? Who's following me? You search across the sections until you have enough data to know which segments are going to be receptive to you. What is this? Marketing. What's marketing? Testing. What are you looking for? Your hot zone, right? So if all of a sudden, you know, she starts sending messages to CROs, clinical research organizations, and she sends five to them and five to pharma and five to consultancies and five to whatever, She's going to look who got back to me. Three of the five of these got back to you? Go after all 50 of them. Put the other four on, on pause. Go through those, then go to the next one. Kind of thing. Oh, you sent five across and you're not sure? You don't, don't have enough data yet? Fine, go five more across. And so what you're doing is you're, you're trying to figure out what's working from a marketing message. I have tinkered with this, with my business, since 2016 what my messages need to be to you to hit the people I really want to buy the programs who I can best support, who are the most likely ones to engage in my work on a premium basis, right? So we do that. But I love coming to see you every week for the entire world to, to show up so that I can help as many people as possible. That's part of who I am. So, so everything, but everything is designed uh, that way, is who, who is who is most likely going to engage with me? So I hope that helps. That's a really great question. And I hope I know I I know I gave you kind of an extended answer there, but that's that's that is around, you know, should I narrow down? How should I approach my job search when I'm not entirely sure or maybe I have a few options? So hope that hope that helps. You know what? We're at 11:27. If you're liking this, can you click the the like button on YouTube? Send the algo as we call it a message that you're enjoying this, make sure you're subscribed. You know I love subscribers. I hate when you miss anything. Speaking of subscribers, I want to give you some upcoming dates. How about that? Kara, I didn't tell you I was going to do this. Uh, now, we got some doozies. Okay, tomorrow, because it's October 12th, tomorrow we have a uh, private group coaching session with members of my job search coaching program. And we also have one of those uh, not next week, Thursday, but the Thursday after that. So Live Office Hours is going to be off on that Thursday, although I'm moving it to a different day. Uh, okay, so that's those are, those are you know, premium members. Uh, on October 20th, which is a week from tomorrow, I have a premium show with members of my leadership coaching program. This is on how do you create your employee value proposition, not as an employer to your employees, but as an employee... How do you show your current company or future companies that you are valuable? I'm going to break it down in nauseating detail for you of exactly what you need to capture, how to use it, and all that great stuff, and how to put your own comprehensive plan that should live and breathe with you, just like your resume. Okay, November 6th through 10th, it's back, baby. Job search challenge, it's completely free. What I, didn't, what I, what I forgot to tell you here is October 25th, uh, is a special live office hours show. That's also free. Uh, on on uh, it's well, it's Community Appreciation Week, and I I I've got a number of of things I want to share with you that day. It's a Wednesday, so it's the twenty fifth. But then November sixth through the tenth, full on job search challenge. I'm with you two plus hours a day, Monday through Friday. I'm here. You're here. We're running it live, and you can sign up for it. Because I got a workbook, I got all kinds of assets, and you're going to get live instruction about how to actually job search, like actually really job search, and uh, we got case studies and all that other good stuff. You are welcome to uh, link up and, and, and opt in, even if you're in the premium programs and you're already in the job search coaching program and you have access to this kind of teaching, it's still a good idea to, to, to opt in. We always love to have our boot campers in there too. And uh, anybody who is in the job search coaching program is going to get priority access 
uh, that week you get you get all that you you have the replays you get all that good stuff too okay and then November 14th 15th and 16th I think I mentioned this or I might have alluded to it that I'm building an entire salary negotiation workshop It'll be a separate product that'll be in the Mile Walk Academy library. Anybody in my job search coaching program will get it free. You can attend it free. We will teach you. We will do role play, interactive, QA, all that good stuff. You will have every one of Andy's tactics and then some. So it's, it's, it's a really cool one. And that's going to be done the week after the job search challenge. So I'm going to have a promotion the week of the job search challenge. All of my boot campers, basically the people in the job search coaching program, can come to those three days. There'll be three long days of coaching where we're going to be building that salary negotiation product. It is really cool, if I do say so myself. So that 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 comes with your enrollment. And then on the 21st of November, a leadership session on reflection. December 8th, we got another job search coaching session with members of the boot camp that's on holiday adjustments or anything I want them to change around the holidays. And then December 15th, leadership on goal setting. Let me see. Oh, yeah. And then in January, I think somebody asked me, I don't know, I think that was, is it Yalen Serrano had asked me about how long does it take to go to the boot through the boot camp? Well, I'm creating a new streamlined version because I like to constantly upgrade my teaching and give you the best and freshest and most effective ways to do things. I am hitting every step in the job search. Now that's in January, but you don't need to wait till January because all the instruction I have right now is the best and most effective. We're just making it better and most effective. So anyway, we got a lot going on. Uh, opt in for the job search challenge. That's free. And if you'd like to check out the job search coaching program, you can get a special price on the interactive service package. Maybe Kara can can swap the pins. Kara, maybe you can add the, uh, the job search coaching uh, uh, program link in the chat and swap it out for the job search challenge. And if you get... You know if you got any questions, support at milewalk.com works all the time because Kara loves emails. So does Andy. Okay, what's next? Tim Marsh Q. In round three of the interview process, meeting with key leaders across the organization while they assess my fit, I'd like to present to the hiring manager my 90-day plan. Is this a good idea? Everyone going into any kind of mid to senior level position should have a 90 day plan. It's almost a sin if you don't. Now, hang, hang tight, let me clarify what I mean here. If I'm interviewing for a job and I'm a manager, let's just say manager level, director level, VP level, you get the idea. And I don't have a good idea or understanding of what I'm gonna do the minute I get there, that's bad. Second thing is you want to use, if I take this job, what does success look like in a year, what will I have accomplished, so on and so forth. You want to factor that, channel it back into your 90-day plan, and you want to create something that you, under, you know and understand and can have some dialogue, whether you present it or whether you talk about it in the interviews, throughout the interviewing process, because when you when you start, you want to be uh, very clear and you want them to be very clear on what you're going to be doing, how you're going to be doing it, what resources they need to allocate, and so on. Lower level positions don't necessarily need to put this together, but if you're managing a team or even if you're not managing a team but building out a, a group, maybe you're building a unit, maybe you're building a product line, maybe you're building a division, you want to have all this in place. Now, in some cases, they will say, we'd love you to come in, Tim, and present your 90-day plan. Awesome. If they don't do that, as you get through the interview process, you bring that in with you every single time. And I don't know how many rounds you're going to have, right, ultimately, or any of you are going to have. But you want to start filling it in as early in the process as possible so that as you get down to the end or the last batches of interviews, whether they're singles or doubles or panels or whatever, you want to be able to say, and you know, I just I want to make sure, you know, I, for my own benefit, I put together a 90-day plan because I think it's important that going into the, into the job, I hit the grab, job running. I also want to make sure I'm clear on what you want me to accomplish, and I want to make sure I like the job. Okay, now, 
I have that. If you want to talk about that, I'd love to get your input. And while I know I only know so much about you know the, your opportunity in the organization and what you want, and obviously we're going to confirm all this. Uh, should I get the job and when I start? But I think it's it's worth maybe talking through if we're in, in alignment on on what this is, or maybe we make adjustments. But it would be really nice to to do this. Is that something you're interested in seeing? Kind of thing you work it in, or if they ask you questions in the interview, like okay what are the first things you're going to work out or how would you go about building out that team? Hey, you know what? For my own benefit, I created this plan because I always believe in yada, 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 and I'm a superstar and you, you if you don't hire me, you're a knucklehead kind of thing. That's, that's, how you would, that's how you would go about that. And a lot of companies will ask, if I was interviewing you, I would ask. Actually, if I'm interviewing anybody, I'm asking, what are you going to do? Give me your plan. How would you break it down? Here's what I need you to accomplish. How would you do that? So yes, resoundingly. And then it's a matter of how you open up the subject that you have it if they don't solicit it. Susan Taylor. I had a fourth interview at my top choice employer and really want this role. Love it. How do I follow up to stay top of mind as they finish their final interviews? Send a thank you email. My thank you template is all over the place out on the internets. It's also on page 83 of the interview intervention book, which I will ship you for a mere $7. You can have the ebook, the audio book, the hardbound that's 30 bucks, and a bunch of other stuff uh, if you don't have it already. And it's on page 83, just in case you need to flip to it quickly. And that's it. I would send that, and that's it. I would not, I would not, I would not spend any more time. And I realize, Susan, it's your top choice. But the mere fact that you're investing emotional energy into an outcome that you do not control but can only influence is, 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 is not a great use of your mental energy. And then you might say, well, Andy, but if I exert influence, it will increase my odds. Maybe, maybe not, probably not. Let them think you don't need this job, okay? I'm not saying you don't want the job. What I want and what I need are completely different things. So that's the way I would do that. So that's my way of, of saying to you, Susan, and any everybody, there's no desperation in any of this. The world is going to work out how the world is going to work out. Everything is, is going to happen the way it's going to happen. You stressing about it or you know worrying about it or any of that stuff isn't going to change the outcome. And the only thing it'll do is maybe change the outcome in the wrong direction. Uh, Clements, can you talk about how to use competing offers for negotiation. One is a director level, but I prefer the manager role for other reasons, but need to get them to increase the base. Thank you, Andy. Okay, Clements, this is a very, very long and very, very complicated discussion because there are many permutations and combinations of things that can occur. And when you think about it, I got one offer, I got another offer. I favor this one, I don't favor that one. Then there becomes who gave it to you first? Wait, if they gave it to you first, are, is there conditional love? Meaning, well, I like this one now the way it sits. This one's second. But wait, they gave me a number, but it's not as much as the first one. But if they gave me more, I might like it more. So all of these are variables that I don't know. Now, uh, but I, I do want to give you some value here because I appreciate you showing up and I appreciate you asking me the question. First piece of value, check out my salary negotiation playlist on YouTube. Okay, just make sure you run through that stuff. Second thing is, when you are negotiating multiple offers, you need to, what have I told y'all? You plan for success. When does that planning start? Before you even start job searching, right? I'm going to bring myself to market. I'm Clements. I'm going to bring myself to market, which means I'm going to have multiple offers, which means I need to plan from now that I'm going to have multiple offers in six weeks. What will I need to know in order to make a great decision? Those are your requirements. What do I need to do along the way in order to best position myself so when it comes down to two competing offers, I can max it out? The things that you need to do start the moment you screen with any company. Hey, I want to let you know I'm job searching and I'm active. I have three other options going on. Here's the company. Here's the position. Here's the company. Here's the position. Here's the company. Here's the position. Why do you want to do that? Because we're playing chess, not checkers. And the fact that you are now earning a reputation as a communicator, how you say what you say is just as important as what you say. Don't walk in, put your feet on the desk and say, I got three other interviews going on. You're going to, you're, you know, you really need to hurry because otherwise you're going to lose me. You don't say it that way. You say, hey, 
I want to let you know I am actively looking. So I think it's only fair that you understand what I have going on and where I am in those processes. Just like I would want to know what candidates you have in your pipeline, whether you're interviewing internal candidates and so on. So let me just share with you what that is. You need to put that down. Why? Because it's chess. Because six weeks from now, as I go through these processes, as I communicate throughout the process, I'm certain I'm going to get offers, which means I know they're not going to come at the same time, which means I'm going to have to call in a chit, meaning I'm going to have to ask one company that wants to give me an offer to give it to me and wait. But if I've been communicating that I had other things going on and I was managing their expectations and I was letting them know where those things were, it's going to be easier for them at that time as opposed to what? All of you are going, Andy, why would I want to tell anybody this? Because when you get down to the end and then could you hear me saying, oh, well, I got three other interviews going on and two of them are about to give me offers. Why the hell didn't you tell me that? Because I could have accelerated this, decelerated this. I could have, I could have worked with that. But now you're surprising me, and I don't like surprises because nobody likes surprises, right? Kind of thing. So you want to make sure that you're, you're sharing this along the way. Now you get down to the end, and the end doesn't mean they're simultaneously giving it to you on the same day. Okay, option one. Hey, listen, I really like you. I'm receptive to an offer. Remember I told you I was interviewing with that other company? I'm getting down to the end. I should know by next week if they're going to give me an offer. Let's get your offer in order. Can I have to the end of next week? Maybe, maybe not. Oh, wait, you like it the other way? Meaning you like option one more than option two and option one's ready to go? I like you best. Give me your offer. Let me finish out, so on and so forth. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna adjust what you're gonna say to whom you're gonna say it and how you're gonna negotiate based on all the different, the 16 different things that can be happening as you're trying to juggle two or three or four offers. So now you might say, well, okay, Annie, hang on. I don't wanna lose this one. Because that other one's not going to finish for three weeks. Okay. Is the first one forcing you? If they are, what do you do? You accept it. You push your start date out as far as you can and try to hurry through the other offer. But then you got to go back to the other offer, right? So you see how complicated this is. But the one thing I want to tell you to kind of cap off this silly little talk here is when you get down to the end, another reason why you want to be a communicator is because it gives you leverage. Okay. You're going to give me an offer. Offer company A is running first. They're my favorite. They're going to give me an offer. I just want to negotiate the title up. I want to negotiate for more money. I want to negotiate for a sign-on bonus. I want an extra week vacation. I want double the LTI and the STIP and all that other stuff. Great. When you get into the negotiating process, one of the things you're going to do is you're going to counter offer. And when you counter offer, if you have other pieces at your disposal that are hanging out there that cause company A risk, in losing you, meaning I might go back to my current employer with a counter. I might take option B or C or D. But when you get into the negotiating process, companies love certainty, right? They don't like surprises. They love certainty and they like control. And one of the greatest ways that you can benefit by giving them control is to tell them, here's my number. Here's what I want or what all that good stuff because I'm going to earn this value. I give you flowerly language for all of this so that it's well said and interpreted the right way. And at the end of that, you say, company A, and if you, hit, if you reach me there, if you get me to that number, I drop everything. I'm yours. Here's my start date. And so what happens is you, you will often get more money because they're not just paying your salary. What else are they paying? Right? They're paying risk. They're paying off risk because it's worth an extra 10 or 20 or 50 grand for me not to be to be uncertain that you might take one of those but you just gave me your word that if I go I go back to the to the mat and I pull out the money you're going to take it and then I know we're done which is what I want but do I want to gamble for 5k less or 10k less no right kind of thing and so what ends up happening is you end up stretching them a little they're not ticked they they understand that this is a this is a process. There's this is so this is what I'm going to be talking about in the salary negotiation class, but this is also what's inside the job search coaching program today. Is how to handle all of these things, what to say, what not to say, when to say it, when not to say it. So, I hope that I hope that gives you some color here and uh and check out the salary negotiation videos. You might have to fish through to find more on this, but it's a good question. And People in my boot camp, they have this problem a lot and they all laugh because early on in the process, I say, plan on getting multiple offers. 
and I get emails and I get messages in the system and I get messages in the one-to-one -one coaching sessions. Andy, I laughed at you because I was struggling. I couldn't even get interviews. And now I have three job offers. So it works. Secret salt shake. Do you have any reduced rates sliding scale for, un for unemployed boot camper? No, I do not. The Remember this, I'm, and I mean this in a nice way. My The value that I create for you is not dependent on your current situation. It I understand that you might not be able to afford some of the programs. You might not be able to afford certain products or whatever for your life. But I, I, I in order to hold true to my value and what I think I will bring you, I do not lower my prices. And for any of you, let's put it in your terms. I do not want you lowering your salary for an employer because you think it will increase the number of employers who will who will actually hire you. What that will do is it will actually uh, put you in a different light to the employer. If you are willing to take less, you are sending a message that you don't believe in the value you're contributing. It's true. You might not think that. You might say, well, I just need the money. It still sends the same message. And what happens is organizations, influencers, coaches, or whoever who lower their rates to try to, to try to get more people in, what often happens is they don't get the right kind of clientele that they truly want who appreciates the value that they will provide. Now, I'm telling you that I think this is worth every single penny, and we do run promotions, and we do have a community appreciation week coming up where we will be giving you reduced rates because we want to do it as an annual celebration promotion. That'll be the week of the 23rd of October. But generally speaking, we have a limited uh, discount that we offer on the job search coaching program because of the amount of content, the amount of instruction, the amount of my time, and the value that it provides. I hope I hope that helps you understand because if 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 I if I was lowering my rates or anybody lowers their rates, they're sending a message to you that they don't believe in themselves. It's true. So I hope that helps. Uh, Saujana, that how you say your name? Do we need to take one of the three program packages in order to leverage the free coaching programs on these dates? I love that you asked that, and my apologies. Let me clarify. All of these dates, uh, let, me, let me go back here. The ones that say, I have two curriculums. The job search coaching dates, this October 13th through the 26th, the leadership is not part of that. November 6th through 10th is free for everybody. 14, 15, and 16, that salary negotiation class is for members of the job search coaching program only. So the people who can attend on the 13th and the 26th can attend on the 14th, 15th, and 16th. The leadership is a sec separate curriculum. The December 8th is for members of the job search coaching program. And all of January is for members of the job search coaching program. So for those of you that are not familiar with my curriculums, I have job search programs, and I have career development programs. I call it my leadership coaching program. Those are separate curriculums. You could be a member of one or both or neither. If you take advantage of my free content and you're not in those programs, you can come to my weekly shows like this. You can watch my, my videos on Tuesday and all that other good stuff. I have webinars and things like that. I have free downloads and templates. The, but the people who pay for the job search coaching program get the deepest level of instruction. Now, there's three packages. There's a self-study package, which gives you everything in the job search coaching program. But the self-study is just like it sounds. It's you're on your own with the instruction and the templates. You don't get to ask me questions in the system. That's the online support. Uh, and you don't get to come to the group private group coaching sessions. But for an extra $100 when it's on sale or $300 when it's not, you get all of that extra stuff for life. So there's no ongoing subscriptions in my job search products of any of them, whether you're buying the resume workshop or the interview intervention program or you're buying the job search challenge program because there's a, it's an actual program uh, or the salary negotiation program, which will be on sale after November. After November. All of those are one-time enrollments, but the job search coaching program 
has three enrollments and the two higher end ones, the interactive service package and the VIP packages come with all the, all the extra fixings and all the attendance for life and lifetime support, online support with the products too. So I hope that answers. I know it can be a little confusing. If you got any questions, again, you can ask me here or support at malwalk.com. Uh, John Cougar Mellon, boot camper. <laughs> Thank you for that. When the Streamline Bootcamp comes out, will any of the current bootcamp video be axed? You will not be without any of the instruction. Might I remodel some things? Yes. The main pillars... The main pillars will be streamlined to your benefit. So the main pillar stuff will be will be going away, but you're going to be happy with the upgraded stuff because it's just it's just newer and I've learned a lot about what works most effectively, quickest for most. I mean, I have data and all kinds of stuff. But that's a great question. Jen Nicole, currently working in academia, love the job, but fed up with the lack of any raise. Sorry about that. Uh, only way coworkers have gotten raises by threatening to leave. At what point do you leave? Now, as soon as you find a new job, because this will go on forever. So unless you absolutely love what you're doing and you love whatever your academic institution is, then you stay. If not, you know that's not going to change. And when it changes, it's not like it will boomerang to some back to some great level or you will take a hugely steep level because most of the time those things take time to gradually ramp up. Pete, if my long-term goal is to be an executive health in an executive healthcare position, should I stay in my current position that I've had many years or look for different positions to broaden my experience? Okay. Um, should I stay or should I go? I'm working with somebody right now. She is, I don't know if she's here. She's been with a company for, I want to say, like most of her adult life. And and it like it's like nearly 20 years. I, I can't remember the exact number, but it's a lot. She's in, in, in insurance, in, in, in property and casualty insurance. And she has, she's in my boot camp and we've had coaching sessions and I've done a marketing review of her material and she has circulated this and she's gotten a uh, great jo job offer that she is in the middle of negotiating with a major medical insurance player. And she's putting herself, should she want to take this, she, uh, she's putting herself in a position after many, many years at one organization to go to another. And she, I think she'd been elsewhere and earlier in her, in her career, but not, not really long stints. But then she's got this really long stint. And, and it's not as if she can leave the one and then all of a sudden become a COO at another company. I would never hire that person to do that because in this person's case, she hasn't seen enough and she hasn't seen everything in my industry. She just certainly doesn't know what my organization is like. And I would want somebody with a wider breadth of experience. Now, that doesn't mean that she can't get on a fast track inside either this new potential company or spend three years in the position, which is a fairly high ranking position, and then go somewhere else real quick to maybe that company's competitor should she want to do something like that. But I would rather have somebody who's seen more. Now, that's not to say I'm not going to hire you for a, a good level position in my organization, but you only know one company's way of doing things, especially if you've been there most of, if not all, your adult life. So that's the way I look at that. One of the, you know, I get asked this a lot, and I say, you know, I've, 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 I've shared with you my background, um, and some of you may know this, and some of you may roll your eyes, and some of you may not know this at all, but... I get I, I I always chuckle. I get comments in the system or in the YouTube channel about Andy. How do, how the hell do you know all this? Like like where's this all come from? Like how did, how is that? How could you know all that? And what people don't realize is when I started my career, the first seventeen years of my career, I worked for effectively two consultancies, and there was a, a third one for a short period of time. Between the three of them, one was ten years, one was five years, one was a, a year or so. I had worked for, meaning three companies, but I saw and consulted to 150 companies. I have the list of 150 companies across a variety of industries. And when I opened up Milewalk, my recruitment firm, since 2004, 
to 2019 when we were really running it full is 200 and some odd companies. To be able to see all of that in different companies, in different positions, interviewing tens of thousands of people, observing tens of thousands of other people that I worked with, running projects, seeing the business problems, and all of that is when you come to me and you spend an hour with me, you get all of that packaged in an hour so that I can tailor it to you. So if I'm hiring somebody as a coach, as an executive, as a whatever, if they don't understand the 4,400 chords, how are they going to make the music, right? If I don't, you don't, you haven't seen enough to know, like anybody can copy my video and recite it back to you. But the invisible work that went into why it is the way it is, and then what happens when we need to go off the script, off right off the book, in these one-to-one -one coaching sessions, when somebody says, well, Andy, you said to do this, I'm like, yeah, except you have these variables. We need to change that, right? I know that immediately because I've seen that. So when you're leaving one company and going to another company, you haven't, you haven't seen all of that. So it's, it's really hard to justify giving you a very high-ranking position that has multiple divisions you're managing or whatever it might be, like a COO position, if you've only been at one company or two. Just haven't seen enough. You think about that. Think about that for your whole life. For any of you that are in business, when you're engaging consultancies, coaches, and, and those kinds of, of of support personnel. So I hope hope that helps. Zen Knights. Most of the things I've seen have been about full time jobs with salary and internal recruiters. But what about contracting and external agency recruiters? Uh, what are the differences in negotiation? Okay, wait, this is a fantastic question. And uh, as a matter of fact, I have a video that hasn't been released about how to negotiate when you're a contractor. But I know you didn't ask that question directly as, as much as a broader view. It's so a couple of things. When it's me, I'm Andy. I'm interviewing with an internal corporate recruiter and I'm interviewing for a company. I'm negotiating with them. And I don't want to negotiate with the recruiter because the recruiter can only say no, they can't say yes. So I want to actually negotiate with the hiring officials. That's best. Hiring official and recruiter, that's fine too. Okay, but I need to talk to somebody who actually has the ability to say yes, not just say no. So I'm going and I'm going to negotiate. And I'm going to make my case I'm going to, based on the value I'm going to provide and I have the entire rest of my life to justify that base, that basis. Meaning I'm going to do things for you in the next 60 days and one year that are going to last you the next two years, three years, five years, whatever, right? I, I can compound my value. When I'm a contractor and I'm working with a, there's staffing firms that basically uh, place commodity styled people, contractors into temporary assignments with their clients. Meaning I'm Andy, I'm staffing agency. I work for company ABC, XYZ, DEF, and so on. And they need project managers. And I route you through me. I'm a preferred vendor to them. I hire Zen Knights and I say, okay, Zen Knights, you're going to be a project manager. We're going to pay you 60. I'm going to bill my client 80 because I'm going to take something off the top. Okay. And I'm going to pay you 60. That's a way to, that's a way to go if you're going through a staffing agency and that could be effective. Now, if you don't want to take the 60, no problem. We'll see you later. I'll just grab the next one on the pile. That's how staffing firms are. There might be a little wiggle uh, room. You might be able to, you know, inch it up to 65 if they really love you and you really hit it off in an interview with their client. And so that might work. Now, if you are a contractor going directly, meaning you're bypassing the staffing agency and you're signing on as a contractor with the company, anything's fair game. But realize they probably have a number of staffing firms working on the same position because it's literally that cutthroat. If I throw out a requisition for a person on a Tuesday morning at 8, by Wednesday at 5 o'clock, that thing's going to be filled. That's the truth. Okay, it's, it's like I throw it out to 10 vendors and whoever gives me the resumes fastest. Like that's what you're dealing with staffing wise. Third party recruiters where it's executive recruiters, that's a different ball of wax. And what I'm going to, I'm going to cut the response here because I do have two videos that is, would be good for you to watch. Uh, one of them is how to work with the um, third party recruitment and executive search firms. So third-party staffing and 
uh, and executive search firms. I have like a little Bible out there. It's maybe a 30 or 45 minute video that really gives you a lot of what you need to know. And then I have another one about working with corporate recruiters and how you might want to might want to do that. So so I hope I hope that serves you there. Uh, let me see, Kara, I, I need to, it is 1159 and I got to get to some coaching sessions. I want to just glance very quickly. Uh, just re recapping this, I know I might have confused the heck out of a bunch of you, but one of the things I want you to know, the, the, the important thing right now is tomorrow I'm meeting with members of my job search coaching program. That's a premium session. There is a, a little 24-hour special going on or email support at milewalk.com if you're not sure. You can join us tomorrow. You can join us on the 26th. The 6th through the 10th, which is free for the community, but you'll get priority access. Uh, 14, 15, 16, those are three-hour days each day or maybe longer to do salary negotiation, teaching, role-playing, and all that other stuff. And then uh, let's see what else. On the December 8th, that's another private session. And then January, all five of those sessions are premium sessions where we're going to be doing each stage of the job search and building a new streamlined digest version of the boot camp. So I hope that helps. I love you all. I hope this serves you. My boot campers, I'll see you tomorrow. If you haven't uh, opted into the job search challenge, sign up. It's free. Get on the list. Uh, we'll be sending you emails over the next few weeks with goodies and things like that, and my digest and, and all that if you're not on the newsletter. Again, any questions, support at milewalk.com. Boot campers, I'll see you tomorrow. Everybody else, have a great weekend. I'll be in your inbox with a cool video on Tuesday. Take care.